Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to another Multiphonics tutorial. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the humble but useful VCA module. Now, a VCA might not seem like the most exciting thing in the world, but it is a very useful module to know about to gain some control over your patches, whether that's controlling volume, the level of a signal, or just adding a little bit of control and expression to your patches. So let's dive in and check out the VCA. Here we are with Multiphonics, and we're gonna get started by wiring up a basic subtractive synth patch. So first, I'm going to feed the pitch into the pitch input of the oscillator. We'll feed the output of this into the filter. And now if we wire this directly out, we'll hear a little bit of a problem. Right now, this note is going to continuously sound forever and ever and ever. Now, in order to control the volume and the level of the signal, we can pull in our friend, the VCA. So let's drag that in right over here. In order to better visualize what's going on as well, I'm gonna go into the visualizers and pull in a level here. Now, we can wire the output of the filter into the input of the VCA and feed the output of the VCA to the master output. Now, the idea being that we're going to control volume using the VCA, so we can play a note, and nothing happens. That's because we need to control the amplifier with voltage. So VCA being voltage controlled amplifier, we need to feed it some kind of voltage in order to control the amplifier. In this case, we're going to use the gate. Now the gate is going to open when I press a note and close when I release it. In order to visualize this a bit better, let's feed the gate into the level as well. So if I play a note, we'll see the level jump all the way up, that opens the amplifier, and when I release, it's going to go right back down to zero, which closes the amplifier. Now that's super fun, but maybe not that interesting. Maybe we want to shape the volume over time. And for that, we can use an ADSR. Over in the modules, let's go into the CV generators and grab the ADSR, and let's place that right before the VCA here. And just to clear things up, let's set the wire opacity to 50%. Now, rather than feeding the gate directly into the amplifier, let's feed the gate into the gate input of the ADSR and take the positive output of the ADSR and use that to control the amplifier. To visualize what's going to happen here, let's feed the positive output of the ADSR into the level as well. So now we can use the ADSR to shape the attack, decay, sustain, and release phases. Let's open up the attack and make a slightly longer decay phase, something about like that, a very low sustain and a relatively long release. Now, what's going to happen is the gate is going to happen. That's going to trigger the ADSR to go through its stages. We'll see the level rise up slowly with the attack, decay with the decay, sustain at a low value, and then release over time rather than just being on or off. So let's play a note and see what happens. There, we've reached our sustain phase. Now we'll release the note and it returns back to zero without just going on, off, on, off, on, off. And that is how we can use a VCA in combination with an ADSR to control the volume of a patch. Now, VCAs are good for controlling more than just volume. Let's say we want to control our filter cutoff using an ADSR. So let's bring in another ADSR here. We'll wire up our gate to control that and feed the positive output of the ADSR into the filter cutoff. Now let's bring the attack down. We'll leave the decay relatively short, drop the sustain and release. And now we should have a nice kind of funky square bass sound. Cool. Now let's say we want to control the level of filter modulation going on. And for that, we could bring in a VCA. To do this, we could bring in a VCA and place it between these two connections. Now we'll take the output of the ADSR and feed that to the input of the VCA, feed the output of the VCA into the modulation input of the filter, and now we could use something to control the level of signal passing through. Let's maybe do something like the macro here and feed that into this top connection. Now, as it stands, with macro one all the way down at zero, there is absolutely no filter modulation going on. In order to maybe add just a little bit going on at all times, we can increase the bias ever so slightly. And if we increase macro one, we can add more. So the bias is going to offset essentially what the zero point of the modulation is. So we could bring this down even more. We have the little tiniest hint of modulation. Or if we bring it to zero and the macro is at zero, there's absolutely none. So let's just bring that up a tiny bit here. Now, another cool idea is to automate the macros in your DAW. So I've set that up already here. If we take a look within my DAW, I've automated macro one, which is going to control the level of the filter envelope over time. Let's give that a play. <laughs> 
Now that's pretty cool stuff. And as you could probably imagine by connecting the macros to several different things inside of your multiphonics patch, you can very quickly add a lot of dimension and expression to your patches without too much effort other than automating a couple of lanes in your DAW. One final idea to add some expression to your patches is to use a VCA to add a velocity based expression. If we take a look at the VCA, we'll actually see there's a velocity input here. So in the keyboard area, we could take the output of velocity and feed that into the velocity here. And this is going to control the sum of the bias and the CV input. So let's increase this all the way and increase macro one. So now if I play soft, we'll have very, very little modulation. But if I play harder, we can increase that even more. And we can control this based on a percentage value. So the more we add with that velocity, the more sensitive it's going to be to velocity. And that's pretty cool stuff and a really great way to add a little bit more movement to your patches based on the velocity that you're playing. And there you have it, all the basics of the VCA module inside of Multiphonics. There's a little bit more to it, but we'll be covering that in some future videos. I think the beauty of modular synthesis is that something even as simple as a VCA can be a very powerful tool once you know how to use it inside of your patches. So next time you're designing a patch and maybe want a little bit of added control or expression or movement, why not reach for a VCA and see what you can come up with. For more Multiphonics tutorials coming your way very soon, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below. And for more information on Multiphonics or to try it out for yourself, you can head over to applytacoustics.com.